Welcome to the ninth episode in a series where I'm upgrading my mini lathe. In this episode I'll be taking this main controller board that I built back in episode 7 and installing it into a case and then installing that onto the lathe. If you missed episode 7 then you might want to take a look at that first before watching this episode. If you enjoy this type of content then please consider to like, comment or subscribe as this really helps out the channel. And without further ado, let's get straight to it. So after quite a few days of working, I've managed to print out all of the parts uh, for the case for this controller and the base stand as well. Now naturally these things never go that easy and took two prints basically to get it right. It's not too bad I guess, but the first one I printed uh, basically the buttons. Don't move everything too tight and there are some clearance issues. Also made the buttons a little bit wider on the newer version. And on the base the connector hole was too small, I've, I've, I've cut it out here to make it work, but I've actually reprinted it. But a big issue is that the uh, doesn't go in, so that's a problem. Alright, so let's get on to it. Uh, first we're going to start working on this base here. Now I've already removed uh, the supports that are around here. And uh, I've printed it as two parts. Let's get this out of the way here. So the base will mount on top of the uh, lathe like that and then I'm going to glue that on here. And I printed it to two parts because I wanted to have a very flat and uh, glass finish on this surface here. I mean I could have printed it all as one piece as well but from a supports perspective this would have all been supports and nasty to deal with and I really hate supports. So instead I have printed this piece and this piece separately. So like that. I'm going to glue that in there in a second anyway. First, let's start processing this piece. Just clean it up a bit. And it's around again. And it goes in like that. It's going to mount in there. Obviously, it's wired into the lathe, so it has to be able to enter from the bottom. Move in, and then screw down. Uh, this is on an angle, so I want to try and make this in the same angle. Which is nice. So obviously this is not the actual connector, the connector is already on the machine, which I think I said before, so I'm probably just repeating myself. But I just I want to make sure that, that it sits in there properly. little clearance there for the cables to bend around but it does work. Oh look at that, there's a screw so like right on the edge of it.
the way that this case comes together is I'm using these. I've printed in these little these little bits here on the edge here, and a recess in here so that it will lock in like that. And that worked out pretty well. And the reason I've done that is because the board here screws in with the four screws, and there's a buzzer here. And the only place on this board where I can actually, on this case where I can actually put any screw is actually here. And so what I've done is I've used this screw here, and I've uh, double purpose this this mount here for the PCB, so that um, it also acts as the case screw uh, from the outside. So this actually comes down and presses on the PCB. So we'll have two screws in the back here, and the rest is just locked by this, which is. It's got a little bit of movement, but it's not too bad. I think it's within a tolerable amount. So we have to put in the three M3 inserts here, and two M3 inserts here, and then there's the case insert here on the side, which I believe was an M4, and it looks like I'm going to have to clean up that hole as well. It's a bit messy. So this is a M4 for the lock screw. But it's a little bit garbage there. Get out of there. Just keep it to the surface center level, you know you're going straight. It's a little bit lopsided in the print, so I'm a bit worried it's gonna deviate. Okay. Now for your information I've got the iron at about 360 degrees, obviously that's probably way too much, but Get in there. Put the longer screw here, or oh, long screw short screw confusion. I hate that. That one doesn't want to go in. Probably the board hole or something's a little bit off. Just slightly enough to give me a headache. Okay, let's take a look at how this thing fits together. So this is a bit of a, a juggle to get this all together. Doesn't really matter. So something like that. <laughs> Inside there you can see that the board is actually sandwiched between that stud that's a plastic piece extrusion from the case and holding the board in place you can see the clearance here is all pretty good too you can see on the back here that's where the buzzer meets it's already right back there
just like a board one, right? Let's see what we got left here. Got these buttons. Each of these nubs here are positioned to align with the actual switch position here as well. In other words, each of these switches are unique to a certain position. And to be able to identify that, I've, I've put a little notch in here and a little notch in each of these housings. When I put it in the right hole, in the right orientation, the notch should match up. And that doesn't. And uh, that does. So it's pretty easy to sort of figure out which one goes where and which way to put them in. And no. Uh, I think that's right. Finally get to take this protector off. And the final piece, I have this little plug here, so the USB connector, you can see it in there, so we can program it. And hopefully this will help it line up as well. There you go, nice friction fit. Oh hoo hoo! And the screw looks pretty good there too. Should stop it from popping out. It's a work of art, right? Alright, so next thing is to get this housing onto the router itself. Alright, let's see how this goes. See if they're gonna work or not work. So all these cables need to go up under here, which you can't see because my hand's in the way, but I just massage those so that they sit flat. I think the connector's going to keep it pretty stable, which it does. It doesn't really matter that much. There we go. Looking pretty good, right? Well, I don't know about you, but I think the result is really not all that bad. This project really showed me what a great opportunity is available to anyone with their own 3D printer. Before this technology was available, making an enclosure such as this would have simply been unthinkable for me. Now in the last video, I did promise that this would be the last major hardware related episode, but after making this episode, I found I needed to make one more hardware related episode. This is because after the doing the final assembly and basic testing, I found the motor fan and the sensor arrangement I built back in episode 3 was giving inadequate performance. So I'll fully solve that in the next episode. I expect it to be a short one, and I do recommend you catch it as the changes are fairly critical. So I hope to see you then.